to myself, man, we must be pretty desperate, man. Y'all, <laughs> we, we, we did, we pretty, we, pre, we, we pretty deep in the, in the bullpen now, you know. <laughs> now we thank God for that, but uh, we just want to acknowledge uh, our bishop and, and mother and, and, and while they're the way. And uh, we send their love. I know they're praying with me and praying for me. I just thank God. I thank God for, for the opportunity. Amen. Because all I am, I am because of him. And all I'm not, I'm not because of me. And I am a little short in these areas. I thank God for all our help. I thank God for my wife. Amen. Bless our heart. She done put up with me all these years, and so that's a, that's a blessing, too. Amen. That's a testimony to prayer. Amen. But I, I, let me admonish, too, while I'm, while I'm passing out flowers to the members, to our guests and those that, that are visiting today. We just thank God for you. But, but for the members of the Gospel of Jesus Christ Church, I don't get a lot of time to talk. Y'all see me standing over there and... and, and uh, I don't say a whole lot, but I want to say to you all what a blessing it is to serve with you. Amen. I was here when a lot of you got here. I've been here for some time. I've seen you come, and, and we come in, and, and, and you've come in, and you brought the love, and you've loved Bishop Colbert and Mother. And y'all have gotten with the program, and you, you, you're learning how to serve, and we're learning how to love the Lord and grow together. And it's just a blessing to me, amen, to see such a growth. It wasn't but two or three men here when I started, but now, you know, we've, we've grown greatly, amen. And I, and I just thank God for everyone. But... Uh, let us pray right quick. Let's, let me open up with a prayer and, 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 and let's get into this word because I'm excited about what the Lord is, is, is yet about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we just thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, but most of all, what you're yet about to do, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you use me in a mighty way right now, Lord, but hide me behind the veil of your truth, Lord. In your glory, I pray that you get all the glory, honor, and the praise, Lord. All I am is one on assignment. All I am is a voice. But let your will be done in this service, Lord. We just ask right now, Lord, as I decree and declare right now, Lord, that we take control of this atmosphere, Lord. And, Lord, I pray right now that, that the atmosphere is conducive right now, Lord, for growth right now lord we're claiming right now lord healing restoration right now lord but most of all breakthroughs in the holy spirit right now lord lord we pray right now lord that you would 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 enlighten us and that the 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 eyes of our understanding be open on today lord give our give us a mind and a heart to receive your word right now lord that we come into a relationship with you Hallelujah, that we may get to know you better, that we can lift up your name on high as you deserve. Lord, all these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. 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 I'm, 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 I'm so blessed today because, uh, you know, Wherever I'm asked to speak, y'all can sit down. Please sit, 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 sit. If, if you know, I'm an auxiliary member of the praise team. And so if ever I'm asked to sing a song, if I've ever I'm asked to, to bring a word, I feel that the Lord wants to hear from me. Amen. And that's a blessing to me. And the Lord is doing such a great work in the north end of Beaumont out here. And, and I feel that whenever we're in service, especially, when Dr. Colbert is up here, the Lord loves hearing from him. Amen. I feel that there's a, a, a window in heaven that's opened up like in the roof. And heaven is looking down. I mean, they draw their seats up and they sit to the edge of their chair to hear what's going to happen next in this ministry. Amen. And that's exciting for me. I really feel that. I really thank that. But this morning, 
I have, uh, the Lord put in my spirit for us, why Jesus? Why Jesus? You know, I asked myself that question about 30 years ago when, I, when, when the Lord was drawing me to him. You know, I had a, 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 a my grandmother was a, was a Granny Mac, great, great woman of God. She was an evangelist. My, my, my grandfather, I'd never met him. He was a pastor. He built his church. He built the pews. He built a choir loft. He built a pulpit. He did everything. Amen. I say, wow, what a great man. He built his own house. He had apartments. It was, it was amazing. I wish I could have met him. But when he passed, my grandmother kept the church going. And so when I was a child, you know, and, and I used to run with my dad all the time, he was the youngest, and I'm the youngest of, 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 of four boys, and he used to have to take her places everywhere because she used to pray for people and stuff in the church. She never preached, but she always made sure it was a, it was a pastor, a preacher, to bring the word. And so one day I was getting older, you know, once you get old and you start to smell yourself and you start to, to kind of, you know, the things that you would grow up, I grew up right, I grew up in church all this time. And so you, you get to a point to where you start doing your own thing. But one day I was watching a television show or something and they was preaching and they was talking about Jesus. And so I was saying, Jesus, Jesus, what is it about Jesus? What makes him so special? You know, you know, I was kind of, you know, I was kind of ugly about it. And I said, uh, okay, all right. I said, I got all this dirty lunch. I'm all messed up. I say, so God, if you, God, will be God, I'm coming just like I am. I'm not changing nothing. I say, okay. So I guess that's what God wanted to hear. You know, it's like, oh, I'm glad you asked. You know, what, 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 what took you so long? You know, I've been waiting. To, I've been waiting on you to say that. Okay, so. Uh, here I am. Here I am after all these years. Uh, I met Pastor Colbert at another church. You know, he came and he, he was called a prayer line. He laid hands on us. I'd never been slain in the spirit. Pastor Colbert, I, I went down and went out. Shortly after that service, I told my wife, that little preacher get a church, I want to go. Amen. Not long after that, uh, about a year after that, uh, Deaconessville was a uh, came and say, ooh, that little preacher got a church. Y'all need to come. The wife told me I was working offshore, and I was going back and forth. And uh, I had an encounter once, you know, on the way. I, I, it was an angel in my car. Yeah, I had a, 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 a Chrysler New York. Big old car, nice. It was nice. <laughs> Leather seats and all that, you know. So I was riding, and, and, and it was like a telepathy, but this, this angel was talking to me all the, you know, most of the way. He said, uh, you're going to join that church. He said, you're going to be a preacher. I said, oh, really? You know, I'm just thinking. Because that was the farthest thing from my mind. I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't thinking about that. And so when I got home, well, I was working two weeks on and, 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 and uh, uh, two weeks off. And so... Uh, when I got back, I told him, I didn't tell anybody but my wife. I say, I had this encounter in the car as an angel talked to me. And he said I was going to be a preacher. I didn't tell Pastor Cope. I got here uh, sometime, and Pastor Cope said, uh, you know, he was going along in the service. It was, it was during salvation time. And he stopped, and he looked, then he did this. And he called me up. He said, the Lord told me to make you a preacher. I said, okay. So this man here is for real. Been here ever since. Amen. We've been here some, some 20 years. 30. Amen. I heard a voice say 30. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
Praise God, praise God. But, 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 but here we are, and I just thank God for that. But see, you know, what, what I, I said that so you'll just know a little bit more about me and how I got here. Because, you know, I stand over in that corner, and I don't say a whole lot, but uh, I know way more than I let on. I, I, I know more than I say, than I talk about. Amen? And, and uh, so, you know, you hear me over there, and you hear me shouting. But I earned my shout. See, I, 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 I've come to know Jesus in a special way, in a very, very special way. It's, it's a relationship. I've learned, I'm learning how to serve. I'm still learning how to love him. I haven't gotten there yet, but I've, oh, I ain't nowhere where I used to be. I wasn't nowhere from that time when, when I challenged God. You know, it was, it, it, it's a, it, you know, now it's a, it's a reverence. It's a reverential fear of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and, and all I want to do is, is serve him. All I want to do is, is praise him. All I want to do is get better. All I want to do is draw closer to him. Amen. Amen. But let, let, why Jesus? Why Jesus? Let's go to, to the book of John. Let's get some of this word before Bishop get mad at me. Say he's doing all that talking. He ain't said nothing. <laughs> the word. You know, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't want, it's not about me, because, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I told Pastor Greg one time, I said, I wish, I wish I could stand behind a veil when I speak, when I minister. I don't want, to, I want you to see me. All I want you to do is hear the word. Amen. And I hope that that's what happens today as the Lord works on your heart and, 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 and draws you near to him. And, 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 and like he says, uh, Opens up the eyes of your understanding and open up our natural eyes. Say amen so we can see some things that we may didn't see. John 1. John 1 and 1. We're going to start there. And it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men amen amen verse 10 through 12 he was in the world and the world made and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons and daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Amen. Verse 14, and we're going to expound on that a minute. And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. The Bible, the books that you're holding before you, if it's even on your phone, is a legal document. It is a legal document. There are consequences to the laws if we don't do our part. There is a part for us to do. Salvation is free, but, 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 but faith has a work. <laughs> faith ain't easy. But see, it's also a love story. From beginning to end, it is a story about love and how God loved you so much that he had to do something. He had to do something because at Adam and Eve, when, when, when the Lord created the world and he made man, and uh, he gave man dominion. He gave man dominion over the creation. And when sin happened, when they disobeyed 
time started. Because, see, in the beginning, it was eternity. You got to remember that, that God walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. So it was eternity. See, eternity is the real thing. Time started, and that's where we are now. And it's going to be eternity again. Amen. But right now, we're in a dispensation of time. Okay? Now, uh, it was a song said I was an auxiliary praise team member. Amen. I was one of the first praise team teamers right behind Mother Colbert, and it was two other ladies. And then after that, we was uh, in the praise team. And Dignus Bill, I was thinking about Karen when I was preparing this word. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Amen. Oh, we used to sing that. Amen. And I used to sing a song, one, that um, said that by Ron Canoli, and, and it said that God, that Jesus, walked out of eternity and into time. And after defeating death, hell, and the grave, and the curse of sin that was against mankind, he walked out of time, back into eternity, where he's seated on the right hand of God. I can sit down right now. Oh, I can sit down right now. That could preach. I might not could preach it. Maybe somebody can, can, can preach that. But God, Jesus walked out of eternity and in the time. And uh, I got it in my notes. But when, And it said that, 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 that when he was found in the fashion of a man, he found it not uh, a reproach. That he was obedient even unto death. Amen. He was obedient even unto death. Hallelujah. All right, Adam and Eve. All right. That was a plan for redeeming man back. A redemption plan, as another song says. And, and, and he, it was he who carried out redemption's plan. We had to be redeemed. See, because when, when sin started, man was under the curse of sin and, and, and condemned to death. Amen. So somebody had to do it. Nobody else could do this. And long story to the short, why Jesus? Because Je God loved the world so much, and, and, and because Jesus created everything, he could die once for everything. And it'll be all encompassing. Nobody else could do that. And so when I started coming into this understanding, I say, wow, this is huge. This is, this is major. That's why Jesus, that's why he's so special. That's why. I say, wow. Wow, he, he, he did that. And see, I want you to understand something. We're going to make it real personal. Because, you see, we are all just like Jeremiah, the Lord knew us in our mother's womb. It's no coincidence that we are born. It's no coincidence that you are here today. Amen. It's no coincidence that I'm standing here before you. God did it. Amen. And I'm, and I'm humbled. And I'm privileged. Wow. And, and this, is, this is a special special thing but God redemption redemption had to go forth it was a plan already the devil tried to spoil everything but he couldn't do it so that was a redemption plan so now see it says that uh, I know that my redeemer liveth and it also says let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. That's why you'll hear me in that corner shouting behind the word and pushing the man of God, whoever stands here. Because I understand when I hear Jesus, when I hear what he's done, and when I, when I re think back on what he's done for me, I got to shout about it. 
I said some time ago, when my children was, was, was in school, my wife can testify to it, that I sit up in them stands, and they was playing volleyball and basketball and football, and I'd be the loudest one in the gym. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd make some noise now. They knew I was there, for sure. Oh, yeah, they knew I was there. Uh -huh. I shouldn't even say this, but one, one game I got threw out of. It wasn't for shouting, though. My daughter had got hurt, you know, and it was a bad foul, and, 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 and I kind of bowed up, and I started walking down the, down the pews, and that, and, and that officer said, <laughs> I wasn't the only one throw it out. Keenan got throw it out, too, because he, <laughs> he followed me down the pews. Amen. But I say if I can shout in them games like that, I'm going to shout for Jesus. So, you know, so I learned how to shout. I learned what to shout about. I just don't be shouting just to be heard, you know. You know, I be, you know, I can witness this word. I know. Hey, you know, yeah, you said that. Oh, Bishop, oh, yeah, I agree with that. You know, you hear me say often, hey, I received that, Doc. Put some more on me. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking another thing about this shouting. Is that when Jesus was doing the wicked's passion, when he was going into Jerusalem, they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Y'all remember that? And he told them disciples to go get me uh, uh, a little donkey that ain't never been rolled on before and just go get it. And the man just gave it away. I don't know how many donkeys the man had, but he gave the donkey away. That kind of baffled me. Okay, but then the donkey ain't never been rolled. Okay, so you sit on a donkey that ain't never been rolled. You know, they kind of honorary creatures anyway. He going to buck. He ain't going to let you ride him. Boy, that, that donkey strutted down the, 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 the middle of, of, of Jerusalem like Arabian stallion. He just walked. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he brought Jesus on in there. And they were laying palms in front of him, and they were shouting, and, and, and they were crying out. You know, and the Pharisees said, tell them to stop shouting for you like that. But what did he say? Anybody remember what he said? He said that if they don't, if they don't, the rocks surely will cry out. While I'm reminiscing, y'all, I used to sing another song. <laughs> I had the privilege of singing a song. Dignesville, you remember Sister, Sister, Sister Ball K? Sister Stella. Sister Stella used to call me No Rocks. She used to love for me to sing that song. I don't want no rocks crying out in my place. But I thought about that. So if, if I don't stand over there and shout, like I shouted at a game for my daughters and my sons, I don't want no rock crying out for me. I don't want no rocks crying out in my place. Not in my place. They make it cry in yours. But he going to know that I know him. Amen? I'm getting it here. I'm trying not to get in too many, too, too many scriptures. Amen. So, and it says, so we talked about God being made. I'm just talking about this light. Uh-huh. He was, in him was light, and that light was the life of men. I introduced y'all to Granny Mac briefly. When I was young, you know, when your babies could see light, everybody got light. You get to where you can't see it. I saw her aura. I saw the light around her, you know. You know those pictures of Mary when they got that shine, looked like a shine around her? That's what I saw. Her aura was like about that, that wide. I was saying, oh, I said, Granny Mac is, is glowing, you know. Reminds me of, of, of Moses, but Granny Mac was glowing. So I saw her, 
her aura. Everybody's got light. We all have light. And that light was the life of men. Amen. So the Lord did that for us. Oh, my. And the word became flesh. The word became flesh. I want you to see something. I'll have to go to Galatians. You don't have to go with me. But uh, I want to read something to you from the book of Galatians. A couple of things because I'm rapidly running out of time here. But see, with the time that I have, I, I, I just want, I, see, I don't have a, a, a little bit of time. I don't speak much. I done wasted some words. But I, I have only a short period of time to try to impact your life for Christ and help you understand what, what makes him so special, why he needs to be reverenced, why his name is more excellent than any other name. He has a name higher than any other. Amen. And that and, and, and the fact that 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 he died for us. Everybody can touch their chest and say he died for me. It's 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 see he 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 hadn't he wasn't didn't have sin, but he died for our sins. That's a humbling type of thing. He said, uh, "Greater love had no man." Which is a love story. Greater love had no man than to lay down his life for a friend. I, I he said, "I don't call you friend anymore, but you you're a son." Maybe I can get some of these scriptures right quick. I got them on my notes, but. Right now, it's all in my heart. Let's go to uh, Galatians uh, number 4. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. And it says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son and made, a, made of a woman made under the law. I, I, I want you to understand what's happening here. Amen. And because... Let me see. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Kind of uh, listen at me. I hope you can chew on this later on. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, "Abba, Father." Wherefore. Thou art no more a servant, but son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. Woo. See, we're back in time. So when time started, there had to be a plan to redeem man back. Some had to done. Somebody had to do it. No one else could do it but Jesus. And we said that when he found himself fashioned as a man, he found he thought it not robbery to leave his royal estate in heaven and to come down to be as a man. Amen. In the fullness of time, see that was a that is an appointed time for things to happen. Amen. And, and this is the, what we think of as the Christmas story. Amen? Even though Christ wasn't born in nowhere around December, but that's another, another conversation for another day. Amen? But what did happen was when he was born, the angels did come. The, 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 the angel Gabriel did come to that virgin girl. Amen. And the Holy Spirit put the, the, the seed in her that there was no blood from man, no defiled. He was undefiled. Wow. It's nothing too hard for God. See, well, I'm trying to stretch your faith right now. 
I want you to understand that, wow, this, this, this is really, really. See, we, in our finite minds, so you have to make room for God. See, you, you have got to stretch. I, Pastor Greg and, and, and I, we, we, we were privileged to, to, to attend a service with, with, with Bishop and Mother. They asked us to come. We were in Texas City. A great man of God was, was, was ministering, and they ministered to, to Mother. They, they, they spoke of him. But he was ministering about being stretched, about stretched. So, I mean, the, the, so from that point, this ministry had never been the same. We've seen changes just come repeatedly, and it's been nothing but, but fruitful and blessed. So what I want to try to do now in the few minutes I got left is to stretch your faith. I want your faith to stretch. I want to, to your, 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 your mind to, to be open and enlightened. I want change to fall off by dispatch angels right now to minister to and to minister for you. And if there's anyone that's in captivity in their heart, in their mind, anybody that's shackled down, please be released. To receive this word, to receive Jesus, to receive victory. Amen. I want you to, 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 to I want, it's not happening like I really want it, but it's not coming out quite like it went in, but I'm so excited about why Jesus is so special, why his name is to be lifted up. Amen. Let me get some more of these scriptures. Amen. Galatians 3, 21 through 26. We're talking about this was a book of law, but it's a book of love. See, love and the law is two different things. Faith, see, you, you, you got to love him. You got to know him. You got to believe, see. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It also says that, 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 that those that come to God must first believe that he is. So it's a, it's a belief thing have to happen here. I'm, I'm, I want to, to stretch our belief. Lord, help now thine unbelief. Amen. I, I, I want you to believe where you didn't believe before. I want your faith to be, to be stretched out. That those that come to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We want to diligently seek after him. You want to seek after him like you didn't, didn't seek after anything else. He said you want to seek after him like, you, like you're digging for gold or silver. Like a prospect. That to go through some things just to try to find that precious. That precious element. But we have found a pearl of great price. And just as the parable, once you found it, you take that and you, 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 you buy the whole field. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's go to Galatians 3. Amen. And uh, where am I? Uh, verse 21. Let's start at 21. It's allowed then against the promise of God. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture had concluded all under sin. Amen. I hope y'all hearing this. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Amen. See, we got a responsibility here. We got to believe. But how can you believe on who you've never heard? 
and who you don't know. And how can they hear without a preacher? I thank you so much for sitting under preaching today to hear about Jesus. Amen. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Verse number 24, wherefore the law was the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on the Christ. Amen. So we were all under the law. We were all under the law. And see, now we kind of in my ballpark. Because, see, when the Lord brought me in, he brought me in sort of from through prophecy and through the prophetic. He brought me in, see, my, to understand the, uh, the, the feast. He brought me in through the feast. See, all the feast and everything pertaining to the temple related to Christ. Everything is symbolic. The, word, the Bible uses a lot of symbolism. So everything is a way to approach God and to come to, to, to Christ. Amen. And so he said the high priest was a representative of, you know, God and the earth. But if that if the if if the sacrifice of bull and oxen were enough, well then that would have been fine. But he said that there was no righteousness in that. The righteousness came through faith and believing in Jesus. So now that's our work, you know. So it's up to us. It's imperative for us to find faith. It's imperative for us to learn how to love him to learn how to serve him i'm still learning I'm, I'm i'm trying my best you know and and but i but i'm still trying so man was born under the law jesus was born from a woman under the law but he redeemed us back. Amen. Praise God. I'm running out of time. There's a few more things I'd like to share with you, but I'm going to have to cut to the chase here. That in John 5 and 10, 1 John, 1 John 5 and 10, it says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. We talk about believing now. We're talking about stretching your faith, stretching your belief, okay? And he that believeth not God had made him a liar. Amen? Come on now. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Amen? Let me go to uh, John 3 and 16. Amen? Because I want you to understand something, the consequence. Don't, see, I said this, this, this is a law book, but it's a love book too. So, John 3, and, oh, I got to go another page. says that for God, let me see, I'm saying 16, that's 17, okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Amen? But that's not what I want you to hear. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. This is what I want you to hear. Verse 18 says that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. You condemn yourself by not believing. Don't blame God when, when consequent things change because it's, we have a choice. See, that's what love, love gives you a choice. You choose to believe him. You choose to love him. We are free moral agent. You can do whatever you want. Amen. Some folks is doing it, and that's why the, state, the world is in the state it's in right now. So we've condemned ourselves by not believing. Amen. So this is what we got to come to. This is what we have to learn. I say, wow, okay, God, this, I'm, I got a lot. I got a lot of believing to do. I got a lot of love to do. I got a lot of faith to try to acquire. Amen. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Boy, there's so much more that I'd like to share with you. Maybe I'll get another time to do it. Psalms 8 and 1 says, How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Psalms 72 and 17 said, His name shall endure forever. Amen. 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 It says that uh, in Matthew 5 and 17, the Lord said, I came not to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. Amen. He came to fulfill the law. And he said that uh, that uh, for I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. To all be fulfilled. So this is all not only a, 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 a law book. It's not only a love story. It's, it's a prophetic story. It's a history story. It's a history book. And the history is not done. We live in this thing. This dispensation of time that we in will be recorded. Amen. So this is. This is something to, to think about. A few points I want to make before I close. Jesus said that I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I am he, in Revelation 1 and 18, I am he that lived and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys to hell and death. Amen, hallelujah, Jesus is alive. But I want to paint a picture for you. I want you to understand something about the crucifixion. And the Lord brought this to my attention. Jesus, for us, he was slapped, he was beat, he was kicked. Amen. They say they even ripped his beard off his face. I want you to see something. So that means he was all swollen and battered and bruised. Not only that, he was, he was whipped with what they called a cat of nine tails. 
which was a whip with, 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 with a lot of different strands on it. And they put glass, broken glass and, and rusty nails and sharpened stones in it. And so when, so, so it was like a fish hook. So when they hit you with it, it would rip your flesh. Wow. He did it just for me. Wow. And that's not all. They made him walk and carry his cross up a hill until he couldn't anymore and he got some help. And when he got there, they nailed spikes in his hands and in his feet. They stuck a spear in his side. I want you to see this. I want you to understand what really happened. So he, they put him in a bar of tomb. They put him in a bar of tomb. And said on the third day he arose. He arose from the dead. Ed KJ, I remember you ministered this. Some time ago, it was on the road to Emmaus, a couple of the disciples after this was happening. And a fellow started walking with them. They didn't know at the time that it was Jesus. They didn't know this. And he was walking with them. And he said, wait, what's up? Why y'all so troubled? I'm kind of paraphrasing here. Y'all, you don't know what's happening. Where you been? You know, they killed the Savior. They killed Jesus. You know, you know yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they was going along. And so they said that it, it come a time to where they bade him to come and 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 bake bread, break bread with him. And they said that when he when he was with them and he broke the bread, then their eyes were opened and they saw it was Jesus. Amen. And he said at that time he started at Moses and expounded through the. Moses, through the law, and through all the prophets, all the things that pertained to him. Amen. So he taught them. He opened up their eyes. See, so now, they, see, this is what I want for us this morning, that the eyes of your understanding be open. That your faith be enlightened. Like, wow, okay, now I see. This is true. And I want you to know something right now. Oh, before I finish, I'm coming quickly to an end. That if this was not true, the devil would have exposed it many, many centuries, many years ago. If what, if what I've told you this morning, that if the story about Jesus was not true, he would have exposed it. See, he can't do that. He can't refute the truth. All he can do is cause you to not believe. All he can do is cause you to doubt it. And if you don't believe, all oh, the word just said, you've condemned yourself. You've condemned yourself already. We can't blame Jesus for that. Amen. 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 So, uh, let's see here. Oh, we had a choice to love. We said, painted a picture. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is what I want to say. <laughs> Amen. I almost forgot about you. My wife ministered this, and I almost forgot. She told me this. <laughs> she was ministering about faith, and she was talking about doubting tones. See, you got to understand about uh, the, some of the Hebrew people. They got to have a sign. It said that, that, that in the story that, that, that Jesus appeared to them after the uh, resurrection. They were in a room, and they were telling them, said, but it said Thomas wasn't there. And it said about eight days later, but Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas said, well, sort of like me being the fire. Well, 
what God, what makes Jesus so special? Okay, so, so Thomas said, I don't believe that. I don't care, y'all, it's more than three witnesses in the Bible. I know what, what, what's supposed to be. You got two or three witnesses within, it's supposed to be established. But I don't believe it unless I see his nail prints, unless I put my hand where they thrust the spear. I'm not going to believe it. They said about eight days later, about eight days later, room being sealed, Jesus appeared in the room. Thomas was there. He bade them greetings. All right, greetings to y'all. He spoke to the room, you know, being called you, he said. But then he immediately addressed Thomas. He said, Thomas, the power. He said, Thomas, come here. Put your hands in these fresh wounds right here. Put your hand where the spear was. Amen. But I want you to say this here. And I'm and I'm gonna turn it over to to Pastor Greg. Amen. I, I didn't say it way more than I should, probably should. I'm saying more than enough. He said to Thomas, he said, "You believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe." That's faith. That's where we are now. We believe in him because he said it. We believe in it because he loved it. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. We love him because he died for us. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Oh, my, 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 my. One more thing. One last thing. The same wounds that Thomas saw. See, the only thing that transferred from earth into heaven were the wounds. So when you see Jesus, and I hope we all get a chance to, and he extends his hands to you. You will see the place where they crucified him. Amen. And that is proof to all that he is alive and that he's died and that all he said is a fact and it's going to come true. There's a few things that's, 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 that's left and yet about to happen, but that's another subject for another day. Amen. Praise you, God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Blessed word. Amen. 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 You know, 